Okay. So, welcome again. Good day to all viewers. First and foremost, we hope you, your colleagues, and all loved ones are all home and safe and are coping the best you can under the circumstances. Thank you for joining us from across the globe and from so many prestigious industry associations and corporations for this third episode of Tune Into Your Hearts, a live unplugged conversation between two maestros. Dr. Icha Cadizes, founder of Adizes Institute Worldwide, is a world-renowned management consultant, best-selling author, and founder of the Adizes Institute for Organizational Transformation based in Santa Barbara, California. And alongside him, his guide, Mr. Kamlesh Patel, lovingly also known as Daji, a successful entrepreneur himself, a farmer to pharmacist, someone who has imbibed medication and meditation for a holistically healthy and joyful living for himself and for all of us. Daji is the current president and guide of Heartfulness Institute Worldwide, who also teaches and guides millions of heartfulness practitioners in 160 countries. Both Hadiz's and Heartfulness Institutes provide a proven way to create an environment of mutual trust and respect, that is, complete integration. Adizas does it in organizations and heartfulness in individuals. In such an environment, it allows the best to happen naturally. A striking thing about the wide range of topics discussed in these episodes so far is the utter simplicity with which Daji and Dr. Adizas explain some profound and deep insights to manage business, family, and oneself better given any circumstance. The episodes remain available on the Heartfulness and Adizas YouTube and Facebook channels for your repeat viewing pleasure. Details of this and a live cast for the medical fraternity tomorrow will be provided at the end of this episode. Now we start without further ado with a question from several viewers around the theme of this week of how a crisis is also an opportunity. So dear sirs, how can we convert any crisis into a positive opportunity for our business and families? It seems easier to conceptualize rather than to actually do. And with this, I hand over to, the, to our maestros for the day. Thank you. Daji, you're, you're first. Oh. <laughs> All right, sir. Before we embark on this today's session, I would like to share something which I had recollected from my old uh, understanding. We cannot control the wind, but surely can adjust the sails. That's one. And second thing I'd like to share with you is a beautiful story I have learned years back. Because we go through unpredictable situations in life. Even next moment, what's going to happen, we are not fully cognizant. Let alone during this uh, very special times we are sailing through. No one can teach us exactly what to do under every circumstances. No university, no schools, no parents, no gurus can give us this guidance that this is the mantra or this is the uh, principle you live by and you will solve all your problems. No, that is not going to happen. So the story is like this. There was uh, a famous thief. Most thieves are very famous during their lifetime. More than Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was not famous during his time, but he became very famous afterward. But most thieves are very famous during their lifetimes. He was getting old. His son was getting restless. When is my father going to teach me this art of thieving, art of stealing? I want to become a better thief than my father. So he had this dream and he kept on bothering father. I said, you are getting old. You don't know when you'll kick the bucket one day. 
you better teach me how to do this in the best possible way. So father said, okay, why not? I'm also thinking of teaching you, but what can I teach you? Let's go anyway, you observe what happens. So first they go from place to place, village to village. Identify which are those prosperous houses they can enter into. So identify first where to get your stuff. They studied the movements of people going in and out of the house, when the lights go off and when they wake up, etc. They were all studied. Then father when they sneaks into one of the houses along with his son past midnight, enters one of the chambers of that house, rich man's house, opens the chest and asks the son, why don't you get inside this chest, treasure chest, and tell me what all is there. So he lifted his son and put him into the chamber. And as soon as he started counting things, showing things to father, father suddenly pushed him into the chest and locked the door from outside. So Ail was frustrated. I mean, he was crying like crazy and shouting, what the hell are you doing, Papa? You locked me in. You want me to get killed by these people? And he, as he shouted more, people in the house woke up. Maids woke up. Maids came with the lantern. You know, the olden days when they walk around with the lantern at night time. So they came with the lantern, trying to see who was in the chest. By that time, father had disappeared. So as soon as this maid lowers this lamp into the chest, this kid was so smart, he blew the candle. He blew the lamp and created darkness all around and ran. He escaped from the house and he took the path that they had already decided. He runs and runs and runs into the forest. He's being chased now by the villagers. And he was so scared to death. What is going to happen now? As soon as he comes near the well, new idea struck his mind. He takes a boulder and throws it into the well creating a splash as if he fell down into the well. So the villagers heard this splash into the well and they all said, oh, okay, now this boy, the thief must have died, he must have drowned. Tomorrow we will see who, who this thief was. And they all go back. Meanwhile, he had already gone on top of the tree. He comes down and quietly goes back to home Father is fast asleep. Son wakes him up. Papa, what are you trying to do? What did you think in your mind? Did you want me to get killed? The father says, now I can rest in peace. I don't have to teach you anything. You are aware enough, awakened enough, alert enough, smart enough. I didn't teach you how to blow up the candle. I didn't teach you how to throw a boulder in the, in the, in, in the well. I didn't, you so many, I didn't teach you so many other things, but you did it on your own. So there are situations which will go on changing all the time, but it is the awareness of the heart that will guide us all the time in every situation. Coming back to this idea of integration, we have to first understand what is disintegration. When I'm not connected with myself, when I'm, let us see for a teenager, when that child is too obsessed with the body, fashion, style, it is natural, it is that age. They identify themselves with beautiful body. A stage comes, later on they enter universities and colleges, etc. They learn new and new intellectual things, something that stimulates your mind. You start identifying yourself with the mind. 
And as you learn more and more and you get a great jobs, etc., there's another thing that starts building up more and more is the ego. Oh, I did it. Body is great. I'm intellectually great. I got such and such a degree. I'm from Harvard. Great. Now we have started identifying ourselves with peripheral things. Nothing wrong with that either. But all these things will lead us and scatter our attention in many directions. Body means so many things. Mind, infinite possibility of learning newer things. And ego is limitless. Right from beginning, morning you may wake up till we go to sleep. Ego plays its role so viciously. It, it is resting only when you are sleeping or you have forgotten yourself during the depths of your meditation or you are so lost in some creative things like music or painting or things like you love so much and you do it. That's when you feel totally integrated because now you're able to move away from the peripheral things that were scattering us, scattering our attention. My Guruji, he once taught me a new beautiful thing. His entire knowledge that he gave me, this, especially this aspect of channels that we create in our mind. One fine morning, which was wintry morning, sometime in November in northern part of India in Sajahanpur, I was visiting him. We were together. He called me with a gesture, please come. And uh, he was sitting on a chair and he scratched his upper palm on the wrist. And he says, see, there is a channel. It's a water canal. I said, okay, Babuji. Then he scratched himself again. And then he said, there's a second canal now. 50% power is reduced. The flow energy is reduced by 50%. And then you threw the third channel. And you see now, do you understand? Say yes, Babaji. The power has considerably reduced now with the third channel. Now, <clears throat> in the business world, in relationships, with the family, when we are pulled apart in so many directions, we remain disintegrated somehow. But if my heart, my attention is always pulled inward, focused inward, it's like a canvas. You know, the other day I gave an example of a painter. On this canvas, he can draw so many things. He can have a nature's, he can have a city view. He can have a beautiful, uh, you know, a person. Um, he can have birds. Likewise, on the spiritual canvas of our existence, we can paint so many other things. We can integrate all these things. That meditative mind is not at crossroads with the business world. It is not at the crossroad with the happiness of the family. It is not at a crossroad when you go to a movie or go to a restaurant or you go to dance. No, you can be meditative at the same time. You can also do all other things. And to arrive at a state of meditativeness, one will have to meditate first with closed eyes and arrive at certain state, subliminal state or subtle state or a very refined state of consciousness, which we can hold on to through practice and carry on with this meditative mind in day-to-day -day activities. This is integrated mind. And since I'm answering this um, question, there are many related questions on this. Um, well, person named Rohit, his question is this, that what should take higher priority 
planning multiple scenarios of 2021 or focus just to stay afloat now? What priorities can we take now at this stage and going forward? To me, the number one priority is to how to remain meditative. When I remain disturbed, distracted, anxious, stressed, I fail to make the right decisions. When I become emotional, I will not be able to make right decisions. So first thing first, how I can integrate myself, how I can calm myself, how I can center myself, I can, how I can become peaceful inside myself, number one. Second priority should be that, of course, that goes along very well, is the family integration. How I instill goodness in my children. Just simple goodness, simple things like my son, my daughter, when you do this, do you feel happy? Or when you do this, do you feel sad? Let that be your guiding principles. Reinforce this idea time and again. So our focus going forward should be this. When I learn, I must center myself. My family comes back. Then the rest, all that we do is for the sustenance of the family and more or less ego fulfillment. Oh, I did it. My business is successful. Nothing wrong with it. You enjoy business, go ahead and do it. Troubled time like this, we are looking for opportunities. What else? What can I do? I think Dr. Adesis can take over from here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, let me start by saying that this uh, sentence, you cannot control the wind, but you can what did you say? Adjust the sails. It's a very strong statement that we should not ignore. It is why. The question that you posed, uh, Harpreet, is how can we make a lemonade out of a lemon? The lemon is a crisis. Now, how do we make a lemonade out of it? What is the opportunity in a problem? First of all, we should realize that everything is duality. There is no day and night. Sorry, there is not only day or only night, day and night. Black and white. Everything is duality in this world. Thus, opportunity and a problem are two sides of the same coin. As a matter of fact, in Chinese, the word opportunity and the word problem, threat, is one and the same signal, send the same letter. Because every opportunity, if you mishandle it, it becomes a problem. And every problem, if you handle it well, it becomes an opportunity. Why? You learn from it. You become stronger of it because of it. That's why I translated the word, the Chinese word into English, literally. And I talk, say, don't ever say about problems or opportunities. Use the word upper threat. Everything in life is an upper threat. It's an opportunity and a threat. It looks at you and says, what you would you like me to be? You decide what I'm going to be. I, I both, you decide. You can make every opportunity to a problem. Some the typical bureaucrats, when they have an opportunity say, oh my God, what do I do now? Oh, this opportunity is a big problem for me. And entrepreneurs, they see a problem and say, oh my God, there's an opportunity here. It is the same thing. It's up to you what you make of it. Now, let's apply it now to the present crisis. Everybody is locked in the house. How do you make it an opportunity? Here is how. It, everybody talks about it. The strength is from the inside out. Don't be like the space syndrome, expanding on the margin, collapsing at the, at the center. And some people do that chasing career, chasing money, chasing success, chasing the ego, like you said, Daji, 
in the meantime, they're collapsing. The family is collapsing, the children are collapsing, they're collapsing health-wise, emotionally. You have to pay attention to both, the inside and the outside. And don't do the other one. The other extreme is looking only at the inside. I, I, I'm not in support of those sitting in the, in the caves somewhere in the Himalayas contemplating the navel 24 hours a day. I mean, that's not success either. Success is the balance between the outside and the inside. You have to integrate both of them. How do you do that in time of this crisis? What is the opportunity? I use an analogy to communicate this. You wanted to play golf or to go play tennis or you wanted to go out fishing or sailing, whatever. You were dreaming come Saturday, I'm going to go out and going to have a fantastic time. You get up in the morning and it's raining. Typhoon, there is no way you can go out to play, to do whatever you're planning to do. Crisis, two choices. One choice is to sit and feel miserable and accuse everybody that they're ruining your day and being unhappy. Okay, that's a solution. The other solution is to say, since I cannot go out, what can I do in? Now is the opportunity for me to clean up the house that I did not have time to clean for God knows how long because I was so busy chasing a career. I need to repair the faucet. I need to do all that administrative work that has been waiting for me for God knows how. So that when the rain stops, you're stronger than you were before the rain started. You use that opportunity to become stronger when you get out of the crisis than how you walked into the crisis. My recommendation to my clients is when they ask me, what should we do now, Dr. Business? I said, now is the time to have meetings of your company, which you did not have before. You were so busy chasing clients. Now is the time to have meetings. How can we improve the company? What are the problems we have in the company that we should improve now? Here is our opportunity to fix up the structure, to fix up job descriptions, to fix up our strategy, to fix up our flow of information, to fix our relationship. This crisis we are living through, being locked in the house, could be the best time in the life of your children. They will remember this as the best time. Why? Finally, mama and papa are at home full time. Oh my God. The children should be happy unless you start fighting. That will be the worst time you can be in the house. So you can make it an opportunity to strengthen your family, to strengthen your children, to strengthen yourself. That's why the meditation is so important. Now is the time to contemplate what is my, what is my life all about? What the hell was I? What did I do all this time? Do I want to continue what I was doing until now? Or maybe now is a time that God has forced me to sit down and ask the real questions so that I can integrate myself to find out whether, what, where I am in this world. So I think you turn a problem into, you make a lemonade out of this lemon by stopping and improving the process rather than just chasing the results. We are all chasing the results. I live in America and this is now the religion. If it's not measurable, it's not important. Manage by results, manage by objectives, manage by goals. Everybody is looking outside measurable. And I believe the most important things in life are not measurable. You don't know the most important things in life. You know them by their absence, which is not measurable, like you don't know the value of health till you get sick. All the you say, oh, it's very important. You don't know the value of life till you are dying. Then you say, oh my God. You don't know the value of love till you are lonely. Those are not measurable. Process is more important than the result. Because how you achieve the result 
is long-term repercussions. The result is short-term repercussion. How often we achieve the results and then we say it's not worth it. Because in the process of achieving the results, we ruined our health, we ruined our marriage, we ruined our children, we ruined the world. That's what we are doing now, by the way. By trying to make more and more GNP, cross national product, economic success. We are ruining the environment for our grandchildren. Look what's happening in India with this incredible smog there. How you live in Delhi, I don't have an idea. So your economic growth is fantastic, but you're dying because you cannot breathe. Process, process. Convert the problem into an opportunity by focusing on the process, how to improve the process. And in personal life, sure, meditation. Why meditation? Let me explain meditation for, as I understand. Everything is a process. Everything is a system in this world. A company is a system. A human being is a system. A country is a system. They're composed of subsystems. The subsystems do not change at the same speed. That's, your body, by the way, does not change at the same speed. That's why when you get older, the things start falling apart. Your kidney is not working or your heart is not working because you're in a different time span. Like a car has a different time span. That's why an old car falls apart. With accelerated change, we fall apart faster. Isn't it interesting that the biggest mental disease in the modern world is depression? Isn't it interesting that teenagers are committing suicide left and right? What's going on? They're falling apart. We are disintegrating because of the rate of change. Tremendous opportunities out there and we get chasing the opportunities, falling apart inside. That's why meditation is to stop. Just stop. And as you stop, things get together. Some, some, that you should tell us why it makes you together, but it gets together. You get united with a bigger force. That's my interpretation. You get united with something much bigger than you. When I meditate, I get answered to my questions. I don't know how. Like somebody talks to me. Somebody tells me what the solution is. I don't know where it's coming from. By the way, it happens also when you sleep. You know, you go to sleep with the problem. You wake up in the morning with the solution. What the hell happened? Because you stopped. Because you stopped, things get together, and finally you know what's going on. So the way to turn the problem into an opportunity is periodically to stop and make it as a ritual. That's why it's so important the meditation as a ritual, as a routine. Stop. Unite. And if you do that, you get energy. You get more energy than less energy. Now to that Royit ask question, when I'm planning multiple scenarios, should I focus on the staying afloat? Look, uh, there's an expression I read somewhere. When you're up to your belly button in a swamp, there is no use of planning, long range planning, get out of the swamp before the crocodiles eat your ass out. You know, first of all, get rid of the crocodiles, you know. Yeah, right now we are surrounded by crocodiles. It's interesting long range. Leave it alone. Try to survive first. But in the process of surviving, don't destroy the process. Again, focus on results, saving money, where can we save, but don't destroy the process in it. So what is the process? Don't cause disintegration. We live in a new Darwinian time again. The stronger are going to survive, the weaker are going to disappear. Who are the stronger? Those that are integrated. Who are the weaker? Those that are disintegrated. Old people, sick people, sick companies, sick countries. 
You watch it. The world is not going to be the same after this disaster. Because some countries are going to fall apart. Why? Because they're disintegrated. The crisis is going to make the disintegration bigger. They're going to go. So what should you do now? Focus on surviving, but without causing disintegration. Sometimes we focus on surviving in a way that causes disintegration. We fight with each other. We fire people left and right. One of my clients, unfortunately, I did not succeed to convince him, is firing 30,000 people that have hardly anything to eat, guys. These people that live, you know, hands to, you know, on a day-to-day -day check. They get a check on Friday, the money finishes on Wednesday, they survive until the next Friday to get the check again. Now they're fired. Okay, so the government is going to give them some money. For how long? Have a heart. That relates to the other guy there. How do I mix spirituality and business? They're not separate. God forbid they're separate. Make money spiritually. You can make a lot of money with your heart. Because people feel your heart. When you do it only with your brain because you try to make only money, people feel that you're exploiting them. Have heart. Have values. Yes, stay afloat. Cut cost. Improve. Tighten up without ruining your culture, without ruining who you are. That is the most important thing. When I consult with some prime ministers, they ask me, Dr. Adizis, we have this economic problem in our country. What do you suggest we should do? And they expect me to give them some macroeconomic suggestions, some fiscal new policies or some monetary new policies, you know, uh, devaluate, uh, change interest rates. I tell him, Your Excellency, whatever you do, don't lose the trust and respect of the people. Whatever you do. Because the most important thing is Trust and respect. Why? Because that's integration. If there is no trust, there is no respect, there is no integration. When is the marriage over? Not when you, when you go to court and you get a divorce. That's the final act. When there is no more trust and no more respect between the parties. Now you're roommates. You're not divorced on paper, but you're divorced in life. When is the company going to go down? Eventually when the parties cannot stand each other, when the trade union is against management, management against the owners, owners against the bank, the banks against the company. Thank you very much. It's only a question where it's going to be over. Disintegration. Why? Disintegration wastes energy. The important thing is to keep energy because energy is fixed. When you're disintegrated, you're wasting a lot of energy to keep the system working. Then you don't have energy to work outside, to succeed outside. But when you're integrated inside, all energy is available to attack the world and you're going to win the world. That's again, why meditation will make you a much better businessman. Because you're saving energy. Focus on energy. So when to stay afloat, cut, 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 cut. But if you cause disintegration, you're going to waste energy. It's going to cost you later. So when the situation is getting, the crisis is over, you have a disintegrated company. You're going to go out to the market, fall apart. You will, you will fall apart later. Okay. I think that's Love it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's beautiful. Again, I like to revisit Rohit's um, idea of how to go beyond 2021. Now, since you have answered 
so well, staying afloat is the key. Protect yourself now. While protecting ourselves at the moment, we can plan the future. Study the expertise of the team that we have. What is your strength? What is your weakness? Analyze it. If you're an industry man or a businessman running retails or product development or whatever, make a list of various possibilities that, oh, from here I can take up five new things. Involve the team members because you may not be able to see everything. Others can see also. Gather all the data from key players in the organization that these are all possible things that you can take up beyond 2021. See your expertise, what sort of people you have in your company, and then take it forward based on various possibilities. So stay afloat, invite your team members, brainstorming or heartstorming, if you like to say, analyze things with your hearts, with a lot, lot of logic, thrown in all directions and crystallize few plans in your mind and you take one easy one and then see what happens next. Uh, Kamlesh, it's wonderful what you're saying, Taji, because it refers to another question that we have here from Ahmed. How to respond to questions from managers and the team when I have no clue of what is in the store <laughs> without compromise of integrity. Ahmed, my dear friend, I have a book we recommend to you to read, one of my 26. It's called The Ideal Executive, Why You Cannot Be One. You have a problem there that you believe you should have an answer to all the questions that people have. Good luck. Good luck. We suffer from something called arrogance. I'm a manager. I am the brain. Please realize the word. I am the brain. Everybody else is just a right hand, left hand, right hand. I am the brain. Totally wrong. Every cell in the body is a brain too, you know that? You cannot be the ideal executive. It does not exist. Even God admits he's wrong. He brought the flood, then he said, mm, I was wrong, it doesn't work. I cannot make the people righteous. Cannot. God admits being helpless. Can you believe that? Helpless with people. Why doesn't he make us all saints? We are all Mother Teresa, we all go to heaven. That's it. He cannot. It's up to us. God admits he's helpless. So who are we, Ahmed, to believe we have all the answers that we should give to the people and to be right? <laughs> so you know what the answer is? Say, I don't know. I don't know, human. You know, a, 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 a ignorant that believes he's wise is very ignorant. A wise man that believes he's ignorant is very wise because he learns. It's wonderful to say, I don't know. Let's see, guys, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Let's learn from each other because you know something? Some people, even they don't have education, they have something very strong. When I consulted to a company, in Africa, with people who have no education, I learned something very interesting. The less education, the more common sense. The more educated we are, the less common sense. <laughs> and those people have common sense. They know things that we don't know because we are too educated, unfortunately. So ask, and you know, I don't know, let's see what we know together. And if you don't know together, okay, we continue trying to learn. Keep flexible. 
And that links to the other question here of somebody here, what is the difference between Adriana? What is the role of the heart in creative thinking? Why, 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 why? Come, come. Daji is also for you, but we don't have too much time. I'll make it very short. I'll make it very short. Because the please, moment please. you talk about heart, this is your field, really. Why? I claim that the heart and the brain are in competition. If you only rely on the heart to make decisions, you're too emotional, you might make a mistake. Only the heart. Only the brain, you make a mistake too. My way is, first you start with the heart. Does it feel right? Should I even think about this problem? How does this feel like? Just feel. How does it, intuition, how does it feel? Then think about it. Cost value relationship. Hmm? Logic. You finished, go back to the heart. Does it still feel right or wrong? Both have to come together eventually but they have to do them in a sequence. You cannot do them simultaneously because you will get all confused. With the heart, stop. With the brain, stop. Back to the heart. And if the heart tells you, I know cost the relationship, but still does not feel right, don't do it. Like you interview somebody for a job. Mm, how does it feel like? Mm, yeah. First impression is okay. Now you interview, you finished. Now go back to the heart. How does it feel? It does not feel right. Don't do it. Mm. Although the brain says yes, cost value relationship, fantastic. It does not feel right. Don't do it. Like getting married. Cost value, don't do it. It does not feel right. But use your brain too. Don't ignore the brain. Both of them have to be together in the right sequence. I'd like to add something on that to make the point very clear. Then the next question would be, how do I listen to my heart? Mm. I can think, I can understand, but most people, you know, they come back to me time and again, Raji, how to listen to my heart? I think this question comes when you really don't want to listen to your heart. Heart always tells us what is evolutionary, what is good for us, what is in our interest. Moment we make a deviation from this evolutionary part or what is worth it or what is good for us, you want to shut it down because you will say, oh no, this is not more pleasurable. I don't like it. For example, you, want, you have to go, to go for a walk or do some exercise or you like to meditate or things like that. But you, you get confused. Oh, let me do something else. It gets diverted. You see, at that time, your heart will always signal you. Whenever we do the wrong things, Suppose if I, if you ask me and say, Kamlesh, I mean, you know, where are you from? And I say, I'm from such and such a place. If I say I'm from China, my heart will start beating faster. My heart will become heavier because I lied. Moment you lie, your heart becomes heavier. Moment things are unnatural, heart will become heavier. When I'm able to see properly, my heart doesn't congratulate me because it is natural. But the moment my heart skips a bit because I can't see properly or I lost my hearing uh, possibilities, then the heart will signal me heavily, oh, you better check out the doctor. So anytime there is a normal thing the way it should be, just the right thing. Heart will not give you many signals, but heart will definitely give us a signal whenever we go wrong, whenever there is unnatural thing, whenever there is that is detrimental to our interest. So heart will pump heavier and faster. When that happens, 
take it as a red signal, red flag. You know, you, one sentence to finish this, because I think we're running out of time. You talk to your brain, you listen to your heart. When you're you working with the brain, you're talking. You're talking, talking, talking. Heart, you listen. You cannot talk to your heart. You have to listen to your heart. Your heart talks to you. And that's a difference. People that do not listen have closed heart. Listen. Shut up your brain. Shut up your mouth. Shut up your thinking. Listen. And, and feeling the presence of Almighty in your heart is meditation. Thank you. Thank you, Mahesh. All the best. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All the best. Thank you so much, Daji. Thank you so much, Dr. Rezes. Uh, this is going incredible. We just wish we have multiple series like this. Uh, to all our viewers, uh, please hold on for a couple of minutes more as we give you some information how to access some very, very useful resources as we go along. Uh, first thing first is, uh, do we have the slide up? Thank you. I would thank you very much and good night to both of you. And uh, let the slide come up. What we want to tell you is the various things and resources that are available for you. Uh, there's, a, there's a live cast tomorrow, uh, 7.30 p.m. India, which is 10 a.m. Eastern Time US. It is a CME, Continued Medical Education uh, Certified Program, which is caring for the caregivers, which is Daji's addressing. So to please do please log in on that. It's on the same channel as which you are on the YouTube, as well as uh, on the Facebook. Uh, alongside that, uh, we also have our main uh, uh, heartfulness uh, web, heartful adhesives webpage, I beg your pardon, which is adhesives.com forward slash heartfulness, which is right here. And this is where you can access uh, a lot of resources. And in particular, please look out for Dr. Adhesives' blog, where he's talking about the three very important influences, three gurus of his life. And uh, what he's let on in is uh, Kamlesh Bhai is one of them, Daji is one of them. So do please look out for that. And there are a whole lot of other webinars that are happening. All of these are free resources available to you. Uh, you can actually connect very, very deeply with heartfulness by going through master classes. I would highly recommend that you do the Udemy course or you go through the master classes, but there's an app uh, which allows you to meditate anytime with the trainer or get guidance on how to meditate and how to rejuvenate, get the various heartfulness techniques, as well as there's a beautiful magazine that gets published every month, which is very, very nice, very informative for the whole family, for all the colleagues. And finally, uh, particularly to assist in these times, there are some additional uh, micro practices as well as helping the community services that are ongoing. There is a core fund that we call it, which is a COVID relief fund. We would urge you all to please donate. It is uh, covered under the Income Tax Act of India. So it is, uh, you can get the, it's IT, ATG, I think section ATG. So it's considered a donation. And, uh, but apart from that, there's a Voice That Cares helpline. It's a toll free 1 800 121 3492, which is really Dhyana. Uh, call there, and there'll be a trainer on the other side of the phone that can help you and guide you. And there's something that we do every evening, nine o'clock, for about 10 to 15 minutes. It's a universal prayer where we get together all with one thought, and it is based on a letter of our heartfulness guide Babuji who was sent to UN some decades ago where he urged everyone at to sit down nine o'clock and pray for humanity. So with that said, uh, we join you next